All right, we are here at my Vermihut indoor worm bin, and more specifically, we're at my cocoon nursery. And what we're gonna do is feed the cocoon nursery to try and bait out some worms. We're also gonna check on the last feeding. And in that feeding, we had some banana peel, we had some potato skins, we had three large lettuce stalks, and then we had some tomatoes, as well as lots of kale stems. And then finally, we're gonna do a taco experiment. So here I've just put in some blended bedding, which is just a you know egg carton type material or drink tray type material, and then a strawberry. And that's because when we put this cocoon nursery together about 15 days ago, the oldest cocoon could have been hatching right after we put it in here. And most cocoons take about three weeks to a couple months to hatch. And I probably have ideal conditions in the house about 75 degrees or so. So they should hatch on a pr pretty regular schedule. So this feeding will bait out any worms that are starting to hatch. And we'll just keep this going until most of them hatched out, probably about two months. And I think I see a cocoon right there. So let me put a little something on top of it. <laughs> All right, so let's get into our regular feeding in our vermi hut. Right, now we're back at the vermi hut's active feeding tray. And the first thing I noticed is last time we fed, it was mounded with all the food in here. And now it is concave pretty severely, which means that they have probably gotten in here and eaten most of the food. So let's go ahead and jump in and check. We'll go right into the feeding zone and that last feeding had those three pretty big lettuce stalks and I expect those to be gone. And as I kind of dig in here, we're already seeing worms. So let's just kind of put our hands in and go underneath and see what we get. All right, as I turn over, sure enough, lots of worms all over. Wow, look at all those right there. This looks like probably a cluster of blue worms or possibly baby red wigglers. And the bigger ones like this with a bulging clitome, I don't know if you can see it, whoops. That one right there is most likely a red wiggler. And those are the two types that I have in here. And I don't see any sign of a lettuce stalk. That is where we put one of them and nothing there. So let's keep going down the middle. And I might expect to see some of the stem from the kale that was in here and definitely that banana. And right there, we've got a little worm ball going. In fact, wow, this must be, <laughs> this must be where the banana, oh yeah, that's where the banana was. Here's the bottom of the banana, right here, the flower end of the banana. And right here is just an absolute miniature worm ball, a little golf ball worm ball right there. Look at all those. They, this is where that chunk of banana was at the end of the banana. So they went right for that, like I said, and then the peel is kind of a slower food to eat for them. So we're just gonna set this over here to the side and let them kind of do their thing while we keep digging in. And sure enough, here's those stems of the kale and probably carrot tops that are still there. I'll keep pulling things out and here's the rest of the banana peel. Again, they eat that fleshy part right off the surface of the banana and lots of worms. So what this is telling me right now is I can really feed these worms a lot more than I have been. You know, they're going to take a while to eat the slow food no matter what. They're letting the microbes break it down a little bit for them. But they can certainly eat a lot more of the fast food. So let's just keep digging in. Things are looking good. Moisture level, absolutely perfect. One of the things I love about these worm towers. Get all the way to the edge. And we had put one in the middle, so again, no lettuce stock. All right, again, here we're getting into some more of the stringy stuff. This looks like a tomato stem, like a vine-ripe tomato stem. And then this is almost sticky. I'm not even sure, as in a stick. I'm not even sure what that was, but there is a worm right there oh, on my finger, but also right there popping out of this stem of something. All right, last little edge in the center here. And same thing, lots of worms right there in the feeding zone. So that is fantastic. All right, what I'm gonna do is kind of disrupt this and mix this around and then I'll come over here on this side and do the same thing. So it's just kind of come over here. I expect to see less worms over here just because there's no food over there other than the bedding. And all bedding is food, but not all food is bedding, which was brought to my attention or 
the way to say it by one of the commenters. I think that was Blacksmith779 that said that, which I think is great. Helps you understand that your bedding is going to be eaten. Everything looks, is looking good. I mean, this, this tray has only been on here for 15 days, but I think because we inoculated it down below for about 65 days, it really started to break down the bedding, the microbes, that kind of thing, and the worms went down there a little bit, even though we hadn't put any kind of food scraps or anything in there. So that's a good thing to do if you have one of these worm towers is just fill up all your trays with bedding. You still have your active one on top and maybe one below it that you're about to harvest, but the other ones you might as well just put on there. You don't have to wait and the worms will go wherever they want. So this is looking good. I'm just gonna kind of dig from underneath this little mound that I formed here so I can kind of spread things out and then we'll go ahead and go towards the front. All right, so now let's pull towards the front. And I always seem to find more along the edges. I don't know if it's just easier for them to cruise by on the edges or why that is, but it seems like with these worm bins, you always find a bunch near the edges. Same thing as the back. They really are doing a good job on the castings. Now here is a coffee bean that I have, and I just kind of want to show you what happens to a coffee bean, which you can interpolate to what happens to a, a coffee ground is it becomes absolutely mushy. So coffee really probably is not used as grit for them because it just becomes mushy in a worm bin. Really eggshells, oyster shells, <laughs> or crustacean shells. Some people even use sand, which you won't find me using sand in my bin just because all of these castings are gonna go towards my garden. I live in Florida, so we have tons of sand. So that's the only reason I don't use sand in my worm bins. All right, let's go ahead and put this bedding back and we'll set up a feeding zone for the worm bin. All right, so I've got a treat for this worm bin. Last night we made tacos and we noticed that some of our hard taco shells had just gone stale. So I thought to myself, you know what? Why don't we feed the worms some tacos? So I'm gonna do it in two parts. They're gonna get an actual taco with food scraps in it. Oh, look at that baby tiny worm right there. <laughs> oh man, I just wanna let you know, I always check my gloves after I hit stop on the camera. Make sure I got every single worm back in the bin, but here is an absolute baby. I mean, that may, that may be like a day or two old. Really cool. And as I'm doing this, you probably see lots of worms all over my fingers. When I go back and edit, I always see worms on my fingers and it's, I'm just like, man, I did not see that when I was filming. But let's go ahead and get a taco shell out. And right there is what we're gonna fill up with food scraps. And we've got two others that we're going to pulverize and probably put in a little corner right here. All right, so let's go ahead and fill this one up with some food scraps. And here's what we had in mind. I've got a, some lettuce stock, but I'm gonna start putting some of the slow food or slow to eat food like apples and some of these potato skins in here. Since I know that they are just blitzing through the food, I'm not so worried about having food stay in here as long as is typical for a new bin. So we'll just put in some potato skins for them right there. I've got a carrot, which is a fast food. Sweet potato, which is in between. We've got some banana. We'll top off that taco with a little bit of lettuce. And then, and maybe an apple core in here somewhere, right there. And then I'm going to put some bedding down on either side. And then I'll put the rest of the food. So here we go with our lettuce stock apple cores, and we'll see how fast they go after the taco and if they eat the taco shell right away. I mean, if there's enough moisture, I'm sure that taco shell will start, start to disintegrate. And I didn't taste too much salt. It's, to me, these tacos aren't like a bag of chips where it's salty, that kind of thing. So I think we'll be all right there. I'm just gonna pour the liquid on it. And then I'm gonna put some bedding right over the top of it as well. And then what we're gonna do with these other two is we're gonna put them in my Magic Bullet blender and kind of make a powder out of them. And then we'll put we'll feed one of these corners right here. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, so we got the taco shells pulverized here. 
We're just gonna go ahead and put them in the corner here. And if you like what you're seeing, you like these goofy experiments I do, go ahead and hit the like button. And I've got two other worm bins that I also do experiments in. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you'd like. It's always free and hit the bell. That way you'll be notified anytime I put out a new video. So there we go. The spout is over here. You probably can't see it. You definitely can't see it, but the spout is over here. So we'll know that the spout back corner is where we put those taco shells. All right, so now we're just gonna throw in our coffee grounds, which again are just another food source for them. And then we'll finish it off with some grit, which they use in their gizzards to help them grind and digest their food. And then we'll finish it off by burying everything back up. So we'll see how they do with that taco. I'm really interested to see if they can just take down a taco whole like that. And then will we get a little worm ball right here? I don't know how many days I'll have to wait to check on it. I don't know, put in the comments what you think. Should I check on this in like three days or wait a full seven days or you know something in between? But let me know how quickly I need to check on these because I don't want to come back here in seven days and there's nothing right here. And I'm like, okay, well they ate it, but I don't know how quickly it goes. And certainly I'm gonna go through my pantry at some point and look for all the old expired grains and foods that I have and maybe grind them up into some kind of worm chow. So I hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicompost everybody. Take care now.